Hi, this is Josh Blackman. I'm a constitutional law professor at the South Texas College of Law in Houston. I am joining you tonight from Signers Hall at the National Constitution Center in Philadelphia. This room has representations of all the people who signed the Constitution. And one of the reasons why I love the Constitution so much was the foresight of these individuals and how they anticipated the creation of a government that has endured for more than 200 years. The most auspicious place to start this is with none other than General George Washington, who was the head of the convention. Although he didn't say much at the convention, his insights and wisdom brought a legitimacy to proceedings that allowed to have the gravitas it did. Next up is our good friend James Madison. Madison, who's often called the father of the Constitution, was one of the primary drafters of the document and gave us such important documents as the Federalist Papers, uh, Conceptions on Religious Liberty, and other key insights into how government works. Here we have perhaps a lesser known founding father, Roger Sherman. Sherman came up with the famous Connecticut Compromise, whereby our government had two houses of representatives. There was the Senate and the House, and each branch would be represented differently. In the Senate, each state got two representatives, and the House would be based on population. This was a so-called Connecticut Compromise, which allowed us to have both big states and small states to join the Union. To my right is none other than Alexander Hamilton, our favorite Broadway superstar. And Hamilton's insight was not just at the Constitutional Convention. Hamilton's insight also reflected the idea of the Treasury and the idea of commerce. And he single-handedly eliminated the, the, debt of the, national, uh, sorry, the debt of the United States, and he created the, the uh, National Bank, which George Washington shows his position over that of uh, James Madison. And I'd like to conclude our tour by walking with George Mason of Virginia. And the reason why I want to finish with George Mason of Virginia is that he didn't actually sign the Constitution. His objection to the Constitution was that it lacked a Bill of Rights. And one of the first things that Congress did after the Constitution was ratified was propose 12 amendments to the Constitution, 10 of which were ratified. And ultimately, I think George Mason, after the law school went to, he was vindicated. And this is why our Constitution, which has existed for nearly 200 years, stands as a shining beacon to the world, and which is why we love it oh so much. Thank you very much.